Hi and welcome, this is Sabi Design. Today we're going to make a skirt with the buttons at the front. Uh, it has accessories with it if you would like to make those as well. I'm wearing one of those skirts today, I'm going to show you. And I have some accessories like that. The first thing we need to do is uh, taking our hip measurements where we are at the widest around our butt. So you need a measuring tape, you wrap it around you like so. And we're going a little bit down, a little bit up just to make sure that we have the measurement where we are the widest. That measurement is what we need to um, to pick the right size for the pattern in the size chart. So that is very important you take that measurement. But we also need our measurement around our waist. Our waistline is right above our belly button. So write those two um, measurements down. And we're gonna go through our uh, the um, side shot. Okay. Now here's the side shot, and I made this, and I simplified it to make it easier for you. The bigger numbers shows the general measurement in that one size. The smaller numbers show within what measurements you have to be in order to pick that one size. We need the hip measurement. I had 95. That means I'm going to choose medium. The general measurement for medium was 98. That means it's 3 centimeters too big. I'm going to have to adjust that. But medium is the size I need to pick. After picking the size, I'm going to have to look at the waist measurement. What is the me waist measurement on that one size and what did I have? Do I need to make any adjustments? For me, I don't have to make an adjustment because my measurement around my waist is 74. However, it may be smaller or bigger on you and that's fine i'm gonna go through how to alter your pattern to fit you so hip measurement and pick the right size for you and you trace them leave a little bit of play like a little bit of space on the tracing paper for any adjustments if you want to you can write here how much you need to adjust your pattern I need to resize mine with three centimeters. So you can see, taking my measurements, I've done that. Now we're going to adjust it, which is there. Adjust the pattern for my measurements. All right. I will show you how to adjust your pattern. So first you have to calculate the difference between your measurement and the general measurement on the uh, size chart, the size you chosen. And you start with hip, the hip because that, that is the, the measurement you um, had to pick the, the size from. So I had 95 and the general measurement for that is 98. This means it's three centimeters too big for me. So I'm going to have to adjust that. In order to know how much you're actually going to remove on the pattern, you have to count how many seams does this one have. Now we know it has two seams. It has two side seams. Every seam has two sides to them. Like that. Because you... You, pick, you, you take two pieces together to make a seam. So it has two sides to it. That means the difference 
in the measurement for me it was three centimeter I have to divide that with four for me that is 0 0.75 centimeters I have to remove from the hip and down you do the same type of calculation if you need any adjustments on your waist this works both ways even if you have to make it bigger or smaller so I'm going to start with my hip and I have already done this one I'm going to show you on this here is the hip line I'm going to start by marking out 0 0.75 there And I'm going to do that all the way along, all the way down. Draw my new line there. next step is to adjust your waist if that is needed I do not have to do that though because I had the same measurement as the general measurement on size medium but if you need to do that you do that now either you make it bigger or smaller bigger or smaller bigger or smaller now I need to obviously make this new line here on the side and I'm going to explain how to do that as well if you remove one centimeter or less here your new line is going to start from the lower hip line if you remove more than one centimeter here your new line has to start from the waist if you changed the waist as well smaller or bigger your new line have to start from there all the way down to your hip when i draw my new line from the hip lower hip i do that by eye measurement you can use a ruler if you want like so if you use a ruler like this make sure you don't get any point ends make sure you make them like fine we don't want no points so it's like a slightly curve there I'm going to line my skirt, so I'm going to have to do this adjustment on all of the pieces, including the lining. For those who does adjustments on the waist, also have to do the adjustment on the waist tape or that won't be or it won't fit the skirt later. I did a little bit of magic here and changed in my appearance because it's another day so you know <laughs> doesn't matter next step is to cut your pieces out in fabric and if you take a look on your uh, sewing project paper here I have listed a few things that is good to to go through which is wash your fabric before use that is recommended because your fabric may shrink in the wash and we are also gonna fold the fabric economically that means we're gonna save as much fabric as possible by using as little as possible now it's only the back side and the waist tape that needs to be on fold or on double so we only need to fold enough for that but when you fold your fabric, you need to make sure it's folded along the grind line. Now this grind line is super important when you're going to sew any garment. Because if you do not cut your pieces along the 
the grain line <laughs> sorry what happens is that all your seams are going to be twisted and that will make the garment look completely wrong and it will also be very uncomfortable i'm quite sure you come across garments where you bought them in a store where the seams want to kind of move forward that's because it's not cut along the grind line so the first thing we're going to do is fold in a little bit of the fabric <clears throat> we can at least make sure that the back um the back part sorry <laughs> the back side will fit there and then we're gonna make sure it's along the grind line so I'm gonna find my pattern let's see more than enough space I think yeah. okay so in order to know if you folded uh, the fabric along the grind line you're going to be measuring from the fold into the edge uh, it has to be a raw edge like one of those you haven't cut into Whatever measurement you get there will have to be the same all along. And it happened to be that I folded it quite well. You want the middle back, the straight side, to be along the front. There is no seam allowance in my pattern, so you have to make sure you leave enough room for that, which is one centimeter you need all around. And when you pin that one, we're going to pin the other. So let me just explain one more thing here. Uh, you may wonder why I have the front side up on this. And uh, that's totally up to you. <clears throat> My pattern, this pattern is made in a way so if you leave the right side up you will have your skirt button to the left if you would turn the fabric around you will button it to the right uh, if you still want to cut this on the uh, wrong side of the fabric you can always flip your pattern upside down if you still want it to be buttoned to the left that's fine so uh, we have to make sure that all the pattern pieces are along grind line and on the pattern you will find a long arrow which is the grind line arrow. You measure from that to the fold or to an edge and that measurement have to be the same all along the grind line arrow.
And don't forget to leave enough space for the seam allowance, one centimeter around each piece. And then we're gonna cut out the waist tape. <clears throat> uh, the waist tape on the back has to be cut out twice. So this will have to be on fold, but twice. If you want to make it easier for you, you can draw the seam allowance around and remove it and move it down and cut it out twice like that. Or you cut one out and then remove the pattern piece and do the same again. That's totally up to you. So uh, you can do however you like, but one centimeter around uh, as a seam allowance, not more than that because it's only going to be a problem. This is why I also should test so, uh, your patterns before you cut into the actual fabric because more than one seam allowance won't do you nothing good. Uh, but sometimes when I cut, I don't draw the seam allowance out and have quite good eye measurement but i will draw it out in the video a little bit to show you how i do it you need something to draw with which would be some sort of a chart i have two different ones I actually have three because I have one on a wheel, uh, but I only use that on certain fabrics. So you do, you choose the one that uh, you like. I prefer this one. Sometimes that I'm gonna use this one. You can use your measuring tape, or you can get one of these things. They look different. There are white ones that look like uh, I can't even explain that. They look different from this, but it's the same thing. So this one have different measurements. Here's one centimeter. Here's three, one and a half, all sort of things. Two, four, five, all the way up to ten. It's really good one. This one it helps you a lot. So we're gonna use one centimeter. like that and you do that to all your pieces and then you cut them out don't forget to cut the back waist tape 
twice on fold. Okay, so I have cut out all the pieces now and I also cut out in the lining. The lining only has three pieces, which is the back, uh, back the right side and the left side. Uh, unless you want to uh, line your accessories, then you can do that as well. Uh, I will not show you how to sew the accessories in this video. It will be on a separate video. Anyways, make sure that you tick all these boxes here when uh, you're making your sewing project. This is literally making sure that you have put all your pieces in the right direction on the fabric and it's following the grind line and that the fabric is washed and all that stuff. Okay, so it's all ticked on mine. Before we continue, we have to prepare our uh, pieces a bit. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, so as, as you have seen on the uh, pattern, I have made um, uh, a hemline. It's also some fold lines and things at the front. We're going to mark those out and we're also going to mark the darts. Uh, so I'm going to start with the hemlines in the front, all those uh, folded lines. You're going to need a needle and thread and you pick a color thread <clears throat> that is standing out from whatever color you have on your fabric. So it doesn't matter which one, it's just something that you can see well. You don't have to put no knot on that. Let's just pick any piece. We'll take a front piece to begin with. Okay, here it is. So this is the left side. It has a fold line. It has the middle front line. We're going to mark both those and we're going to mark the hem line as well. So what I do, I take, let's say, this fold line here at the top. Take some pins and I'm going to make sure it stay on there. We're going to fold in this uh, fold line the pattern uh, paper like this. If you feel it's easy to fold the other way, that's up to you. This is how I do it. Like so. You can pin that down. And now we're going to sew this by hand. Uh, so we're going to see here. Yeah, okay. So we're going to make these, um, the markings by hand. You can use a uh, chart on the other side if you want. I prefer doing it by hand. It doesn't take that long. You're going to sew like up to the fold all the way along long stitches leave a little tail on this side
just like so. I will show you how that looks like. Like that. Now we're going to do the same on this line here, which is the middle front. This is very important to have that as well. Take a new piece of thread. We're going to do the same here. So sorry about that. I'm moving the pins so I can fold in the other line here. I'm securing the pattern paper a little bit here just because it's a little bit easier up to you and then once again by hand long stitches up to that fold there along all the way along Sorry, I got a bit quiet. <laughs> I was concentrating and thinking at the same time. All right, so that's that. Let's have a look on that. Splendid. Okay, so now we need to do the same on the hemline here. So you do this to all of your patterns um, the same way. Fold in the fold line there. Where you want to mark out and stitch by hand I will get back when I finished all that then we're gonna do the darts well I actually thought of um, I should have uh, showed you how to do the back as well because it's a little bit different when it's on fold in it but it's just as easy, we just have to prepare it before we can do mark the hemline and mark the um, darts. So what I do is I'm going to put some markings with a needle. You can use thread if you want, but it's quicker with the needles. We're going to put some needles along the fold here. This is to mark where the middle of the back is so we have something to follow when we're going to open the pattern up or the fabric to remove the pattern in order to do um, 
Mark out the hemline. So, so we have needles in the fold all the way along. Now, if you have one of those tracing papers for the uh, darts, go ahead and use them. Make sure that the uh, chart end up on the right side of the fabric, which will be on the wrong side. It's called wrong side here. Sorry. You want it to not be on the right side. You want it to be on this side. That's what I meant. Sorry about that if it's confusing. I don't have that sort of tracing paper, so I'm going to show you how I do it. Anyways, when you have pinned your middle back marking there, we're going to remove the pattern. And we're going to open it up like this. Let's see if I can fit this on the screen. Like that okay so as you can see we have the needles here now we have we have that markings so we can follow that like this so you can actually place your pattern back where it needs to be you pin that pattern down like this Sorry, I have to adjust this a little bit. There you go. Okay. So I wish to start just marking out the dart, which is on, on here. And we're going to do this one here with the needle and thread, but this one with a chark. And I don't have that tracing paper, so I'm going to use this one. So I locate the end of the dart. It's right there. I can see it from this side. And I just put a little pin there, like just nip it a bit, just nip it a bit. And up here, I see where the dart begins. I mark that out like this. Okay. And I flip this over. And with a ruler, with a ruler, I start from that point. To one of the markings and then I do the same to the other mark like this there you go you got one there awesome and we're gonna do the hemline by hand Fold in the fold, uh, fold line or hemline there, like a line on the pattern there. And then we're going to do the same as before. We're going to hand stitch with long stitches here. Leave a little tail. Like that. And now we're going to move this over to the other side. We're going to flip it over. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. It's hard to, for me to see if you see. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
So we flip it over to this side, like that. Make sure that you are following your pinned marking there. You will see that your marking will match with the fold, uh, hemline there. And that you have your seam allowance all the way around. I'm going to draw out my dot here again, but on this side. I'm going to do the same here, put a pin where the dot ends, just a little nip. Uh, I have to draw where it starts, flip it over. And then draw from that point to your markings. Just like so. And fold here. Let's see the hemline there. And take some more thread and stitch that and when I've done all of those this one and the other piece I have left to do um, I get back to you with the other darts I have the darts to do on the other pieces but it's basically the same thing you just put that little stop right there like a where the oh yeah uh, I uh, did it wrong here a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, actually, I have to put this on the other side. There you go. So. Alright, so, sorry about that. I have to obviously flip my pattern over to the wrong side. And pin it down. Make sure I have the seam allowance all the way around. And then I do the same as I did on the back side, which is put a pin where the dart ends, mark out the beginning here, and use a ruler to draw it out, like so. And you do that on the other one as well. Uh, if you are lining your uh, skirt you have to do the darts on the skirt as well so when we have uh, marked out all of the fold lines hemlines and um, darts and everything there's one more thing we need to do before we can sew everything on the sewing machine and uh, we have to add the interface so one of the pieces here try to make it easy for you this one's gonna be cut twice easy is if you, if you cut that on the fold so you get one for the right side and one for the left side it's gonna be on the front pieces where the, the it's for the bottom bracket really so it's important you have that um, You don't add any seam allowance on this. We also need 
some interface on some of the waste tape now uh when i've just sold my own skirt i have <laughs> put the interface on the wrong bits so i hope i don't do that in the video now so you're gonna take one of the back made it You also need one on one of the left and one on the right side of the waist tape and you have it's gonna be on the waist tape that's gonna be on the outside of the skirt because you're gonna make basically two waist tapes uh, so it has a front and a back leg so you have one that you will see from the outside and one side that will be on the inside the one that's gonna be on the outside is the one that wants to have some interface Let's see, that's the right and that's the back. Must be that. For me, it wouldn't matter if I would end up putting the interface on the on the wrong pieces. I mean, that happens. I have done that before. It's not the end of the world. So it's time to fuse that on the fabric and I'm going to show you how to do it. So when you're going to add the interface, it's important that you use the correct heating for the interface you've chosen. It may vary and I also recommend that you have, let's see if I can find it here. There it is. Some kitchen towel, some paper, because some interface uh 
is quite like thin so the glue comes through and you don't want that to end up on your ironer so i always use one of these if you would end up with glue on your ironer there are simple solutions to get rid of that and uh, there's a thing you can rub on and it will melt it all away and take it all off anyways Put it over like this. Make sure that you do not use any steam. And however long you're gonna press these on for depends on the interface you chosen. I have to lift mine up quite often because my iron goes down by when it's facing down or being left. It's a safety thing on mine I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do this and I will go through all my pieces and make sure that they are all right. I will continue with these soon. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it on one of the front pieces. The front pieces need interface because there's gonna be button there and button holes. So it's for the bottom placket. That was the wrong piece. So you make sure you put the glue down on the wrong side of the fabric, like this. And we did not cut any seam allowance, that's why it's a little bit left there. That's fine. And you add the other piece to the other front piece you will still see your marking on the front so don't worry about that you will still be able to pull the thread out later when that is needed you leave the iron on don't rub it back and forward like you would iron it just press the interface that I have I'm not sure what you would call that in English but in Swedish we would call that a tailor's interface it's something I bought when I had my business in Sweden and unfortunately I don't have a lot left so I cannot sell it to you but in the future I might be able to get hold on to the same thing and I can help you with that but there are many places that would sell different interface and if you're not sure which one to get some uh, some stores allow samples and I have done that myself. I've ordered some samples of interface to, to have a feel and see how, how they are and what goes well with what fabric. This one works with a lot of fabrics. So, interface on both front sides. You know at the very front here where your markings are one on the left side one on the right side and one on one of the back side of the waist tape um, and I'll take it from there so while I'm continuing interfacing my other pieces I thought I would real quick just go over um, after you 
uh, added your interface it is uh, a good idea to leave them to cool down so the glue will set and it will stick better because if you start using it while it's warm the interface may um, come loose so it's good to leave it for rest a little bit uh, some fabric may fray a lot if your fabric does it's a good um, it would be good for you to overlock around all the pattern pieces or use a zigzag on your sewing machine if you uh, if you if you knock on a line your uh, line your skirt I would suggest you do uh, overlock or a zigzag around your edges anyways to make it nice on the inside if you're gonna line your uh, say it all wrong all the time if you're gonna line your skirt and it does not fray then you do not have to zigzag or overlock I won't do that on mine because my fabric is not fraying anything Do not use the overlocker to put these garments together alone. You will need a normal sewing machine with straight seam. So, yeah, that's that. And now we're going to put them together. And the first thing we need to do is sew all the darts. All right, so now we're gonna start sewing, which we have to do the darts first. Take any piece with a dart. Right side against right side. And what I do, I put a pin in the line like this on the dart and I look on the other side if you match like that. That's how I do it. Like this one doesn't quite match, then I have to adjust that. Just like so. When you sew, you can use Z stitch length 3. Straight seam, make sure you start and stop so you fasten the um seam press the pedal there it is all right Just like this. Don't worry about the chalk still being there. I can show you how to get rid of that quickly. Take a scrap bit of the same fabric and you rub it against like so. And then it's gone. And you need to sew all the darts. And um, you might as well do the darts on the lining as well if you want. I'm going to leave the lining till when it's time to use it. So I'm only going to make the darts for this skirt.
So now when you have made the darts, do not press them or anything with the ironer. Not yet. We're gonna do that later. We're gonna attach our front pieces to the back. They can really only match on one side. Like so. You put them right side against the right side. You can take one side at a time if you like, or pin them both at the same time, doesn't matter. Whatever works for you the best. And you use the same stitch lengths all through the work, um, all through the job um, project. Sorry, uh, unless I say otherwise. And when you sew, make sure you're sewing uh, with one centimeter seam allowance. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're following the presser foot because the presser foot's width may not be one centimeter. Anyway, and it will vary on the weights on the presser foot, depends on the brand on the sewing machine and the type of the presser foot. When you have sewn the darts, do not iron iron them then yet. Iron iron. So we have sewn the side seams. Before we're gonna iron them and make sure that they are flat and nice seams, and press the seam allowance um, nicely. We're gonna try the skirt on a little bit just to double check that it suits you, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Take your skirt, well first actually we can do like this, on the left side fold in the fold line, the first mark in there, fold there, put a pin, 
on the right side, you fold in the marking as well. Put a pin just to keep it in place. Now we're going to wrap it around ourselves. The right side here has to match with the second marking here. So you put them like this. It's going to overlap. Like so. So we're making sure it's not too small or anything, which it isn't. I might have to adjust here on mine. Uh, and that's fine. You can just pin here. I can show you how to do that actually. All right, so it's a little bit, it will be a little bit too big here because the waistband is obviously smaller at the top, so it's going to keep that up. So, but I feel like this is a little bit like this to me here because I don't really have anything to fill it up on the side. So I'm going to pin this. like this just a little bit just like that and I'm going to do the same here alright so I'm going to show you this alteration I'm doing here. So you get quite a lot in this uh, tutorial, not just how to sew it, you also get the alteration on the pattern and the, and the garment. So actually let's do that before we continue. I felt like uh, my skirt was a little bit uh, too big, sorry, around the um, hips. So I have pinned a little bit here. I'm going to move the pin so it's not on double, only on <clears throat> one, like this, like so. Like that, okay. And then on the other side, I'm going to locate them pins. I'm going to measure how much I wanted it taken in. So it's about a centimeter. On the other side was slightly more, so I have to do the... Um, uh, to make sure it's the same on both sides. Um, I usually divide the, the uh, differences there, so I will end up only taking one centimeter on the sides. So you can just mark that out like this if you want, doesn't matter. Or just move your pins to the other side through both fabrics, both sides I can show you. Okay. So now I'm gonna measure, take this one. One centimeter is what I wanted. On the other side. Okay. 
what I normally do is that I put the side seams together and I feel that the needles are above each other so I know that I place them on the same place and to take this in I have to go out with my seam where where it started so it's not just make a um, a point or something it has to be a smooth transition here and also a smooth transition down I'm gonna draw it out so I show you So you kind of have to smooth it out quite long or it will be quite pointy if you do it like short and I will not change the waist because there are a waist tape that is going to make the waist even smaller just to, to fit the general measurement on the waist in the um, uh, size chart. So I'm going to sew there and I'm going to do the same on the other side. I start with uh, start sewing where I already been sewing so uh, I sew over the old seam a little bit. <laughs> Now I'm trying to copy the new seam here over to the other. And I feel with my fingers that the needles on the other piece here is following the new seam here. Yep, it does. I can start sewing that then. More details on how to alter your skirt. I do have already some videos in Swedish though, but I will make some in English as well because I do alterations all the time. So I will go more into detail with you with that if that is needed. If you don't see any video like that in your in in English, then just let me know and I will make you one. so that was a quick alteration I had to do on my skirt so I'm just gonna wrap it around myself and double check and remember that on the left side you fold in on, on the first mark in there you fold in on the right side and the right side had to match the second marking like that but on this side like this just like so so I'm going to try mine on and when I'm happy I'm going to remove my old seam and then we're going to iron it. It is time to iron our garment now after we've done a little bit of a fit in there. So it depends on how you've been doing your sewing here because um, I actually forgot to say that after you've done your fitting you are free to zigzag or overlock uh, your seam allowance together if you haven't 
overlock or zigzag your pieces separately if you want to i'm not going to do that to mine because mine is not going to fray so it's fine with the um darts we want the darts to be pressed towards the back uh, it's quite I, I usually think like this everything goes back 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 first back uh, if you can you have steam on your iron it used up make sure you use the right temperature for your fabric uh, because I'm not gonna uh, overlock or zigzag my seam allowance together I'm gonna iron it like this if you would have stitched them together you've um, press them against the back on the back you have two darts you want them to face each other all the way towards the middle back And it will look quite nice when it's all done. I have to press a little bit more than I think. Mm -hmm. Done and done. Very nice. Now we continue to sew. So I'm testing this. And as you can see, it made a big difference to the shape. Just doing the alteration. Don't worry about this. We're going to iron up. That looks good. All right. Uh, I forgot another important thing to say before. Uh, if you make any alterations on your skirt, you should do the same alterations on the lining. Just gonna line it. Uh, I will do that when I get to the lining, so I'm not doing it right now. Uh, the next step is to make corners on the front you see there are diagonal lines here we're gonna sew those so any side you can start with doesn't matter and you would take the right side against the right side and put them together like this try to move a little bit these markings the other way thick the thread I mean like this and you want to sew right there a straight seam do that to the other side as well Here at the bottom. Right side against the right side. It's going to build a nice corner there. I will explain to you soon why. The corners there uh, are to make a very professional looking inside and our front, the right side. It will look very professional. So it will look like this. 
Here's the one you've been sewing. And then you just turn it. We're going to press here. Have a feel with your finger that the seam allowance are spread like so. And then we gently press there. Here's the other side. And you will gently press there as well. see how nicely you will end up there with your markings now I would press all the markings here at the front all the way along the hemline and to the other front here the first fold line there press those you make sure that your threaded marking is on the fold in the fold like this like so so now there's two di directions to go here so either you are lining it or not lining it i'm gonna show you both how to continue from here so we start without lining what we've done now we've been ironing all the hemlines and everything it's gonna look awesome on the front look at that Look at that nice corner. This is so professional. Be proud of yourself. This is awesome. Okay. It's up to you now if you would want visible seams or invisible seams. Which means uh, along the um, bottom placket and the hemline. I prefer uh, invis invisible uh, because I just like that. Uh, that's up to you. I'm gonna show you anyways how to do the invisible one If you're gonna do the visible one you basically sew with four centimeter From the fold and in a straight seam like this all the way along And you will find on your needle plate. I will show you needle plate this it will show you where four centimeter may be if you can't find it 
like I can see the two centimeter here I measure from there and two centimeter extra and put uh, some masking tape I can follow there or any other tape or something I can follow there uh, yeah so just a straight seam and if you want a visible one I would suggest a stitch length three and a half to four uh, for the invisible seam we're going to do this by hand now see if I can connect another lamp not sure if that is helpful make it easier for you to see Let's move it along. Uh, welcome. There we go. Uh, if you would do this without lining, like I said, I would suggest some sort of an overlock or a zigzag, and that is before you sew the corners. But I'm gonna line mine, so I'm gonna leave my edges raw. I put some pins like this about a centimeter away from the edge you can do that all the way around including the hemline take a matching piece of thread I'm going to just take one from the machine right now Make sure you make a knot on the other end. And then we're going to start from the top and we're going to work ourselves down like this. I fasten my needle and thread here at the top on the folded piece here, just like so. And I fold it over a little bit like this. About a centimeter is what I fold. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a stitch here, but only nipping just a little bit in the fabric. You don't want it to stick out on the on the right side here. You don't want that to be visible. So only grabbing a few threads or something in the fabric like that. I could have started that better there. And you can take a bigger um, nip on this side here with your needle like that. Because you're not going to see that anyways. Just small stitches here carefully so it doesn't, it's not going to show up on the right side of the fabric. Like this. And you can take quite a big, like, a little bit more on that folded piece there. Because that, that's ended up on the inside anyway. So nobody going to see that. So this is what we normally do when we do invisible hem. On different garments. But it works very well for this uh, bottom placket. So you continue doing this all along. The bottom plackets on both sides and along the hemline like this and I will show you how it looks like on the front there's no visible seam but it's stuck like that I will go more into detail with how to do those sort of stitches in other videos I do believe I already have one it might be in Swedish I can make one in English as well now I'm going to do, I'm going to line mine, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So in order to um, 
attach the lining to your skirt you need to sew the lining just the same way that you did the skirt you make the darts and you put it together and any alterations that you did on the side you have to apply it up to your um, lining as well which I already have and I have eye in it so <coughs> Your skirt, put that in front of you with the right side up. You will notice that the lining will look a lot smaller both on the width and the length and that is because of this. So you will see some real magic here now. You want the lining to be facing uh, right side against right side. And we're going to start with the front, like this. So the right side against the right side. Start from the top and pin it. See if you see better there, sorry about that, like so. There will be some seam allowance left over after you get to the corner there. Pin the other side as well, front against the front there, like so. From the top all the way down to that corner. gonna sew here straight seam all the way down to the corner here you will stop where the corner is so you will stop <laughs> you see it's quite dark there okay so here's the corner, so you will stop there. Don't go over the corners seam there, you stop at the corner. Oh, it gets so dark in the camera. I'm so sorry about that. Like that. On the other side, you might have to start where the corner is. That's okay. As long as you don't sew over the corner. Like, don't, don't sew past that corner seam.
that's the front so now we're gonna do uh, the hemline it will look a little bit like a mess right now but that's fine so you want to match oh my god get a little bit of a stain there there we go you want to match the seams against seams that's the side seams and let's see if i've done this right So it will look like this, here's the corner and you want to sew all the way up to that corner again, Let's see if I can show you in a good way, and there. So here's that corner and here's the front you've just been sewing and where that seam ends that's where you're gonna start the hem, hem seam there without sewing over the corner there and you sew all the way to the other side. Uh, so sorry if there was a cut there I had to double check something there. Okay so you saw from that side, that end to that, from one corner to another, and that's your hem line. show you how it looks like after that's done. Uh, you have been sewing all along at the very bottom there, attaching the lining in the hem like this. And now we're gonna turn it to the right side and you will be amazed on the result. amazing in it so now you have a very nice hemline you have very nice fronts and bottom plackets like this very professional looking i'm very proud of you that you managed this far awesome so we're gonna iron the seam allowance a little bit We will be making sure that the seam allowance where you attach the line um, lining will f uh, on the front here you want them to face in you can feel that that is the seam allowance facing that way and on the hemline you want you want it to face that way up Yeah. 
These are for the attachments, like the accessories. I call them attachments, I think. You uh, need four for the skirt and two for each accessory. Right side against right side. Straight seam, like always. I use, uh, let's see, yeah, one of these to turn these to the right side. I don't know what you call these. It has a little hook there. Like this. Okay. And I iron them flat. Making sure that the seam allowance are spread on the inside. Like so. And then I press it like that. It will look like this. Because they're going to be folded double later so there won't be no seams visible there. Go ahead and make as many as you need for your skirt. I ended up having to put the camera on the other side of me because it seems like it makes it a slightly brighter. I'm gonna have to continue my work tomorrow anyways. It's getting late. So I'm gonna show you where I place these attachments on your skirt. When you're gonna attach them, you're gonna need your D rings. They look like this, like a D. <laughs> and you put that one in and you make sure that the seam is on the inside like that I hold them in place with a pin it's easier because then you can make all of those Placements on the front is very easy because it's right on top of the darts. Only pin it to the, if you have lined it, uh, only pin it to the, well, you, you can pin it on both actually, it doesn't matter, never mind. Just pin through both, both layers, do that. Just both. Sorry for the confusion there. I wasn't thinking there. Just like that. Like that. On the back though. I measure from the dart towards the middle and I attach them about sorry, about two centimeters away I think it is let's have a quick look yep like that. I secure them uh, 
uh, with about five millimeter in so less than the normal seam allowance just because you don't want that to be visible later when you put the waist tape uh, it just makes it easier later if you secure them You don't actually have to um, like uh, start and stop at both ends, it doesn't matter because you're going to attach the waist tape later so it's going to be secure enough later. It will look like this. Here's the back, here's the front. So there's only one more thing to sew here, which is uh, the waist tape, except from the buttonholes. Take the pieces with the interface on. These. I was just trimming off some access uh, um, interface. All right. So let's see which side do we have here. That is the right side. And I want to add them on the sides like so Let's see if that will help maybe sorry so here's the back here's the right one I added there like that yeah that was right yeah 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 just looking in there now and here's the left one So, and you will sew them short ends. You can already now put together the other one as well. like so uh, I'm just gonna have a real quick think here mm -hmm. okay so on both we sew these short ends
Now we want to put together these two wing tapes with each other, right side against right side. And we pin here at the very top of the wing tape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start in one of the short ends, sew, and then continue to sew all the way at the very top, all along the waist tape, and we finish by sewing the other short end. It will look like this. Now you will want to cut off the corners without cutting into the seam. Like so. It will make a sharper corner when you turn it. Now we're going to stitch down the seam allowance. Now the side with the interface is the one that's going to be on the outside of the skirt and the one without is going to be on the inside. So we want all the seam allowance to be towards the one without interface, like so. And we're going to stitch down, sorry, uh, a few millimeters from the previous seam and in there on through the seam allowance and on to there but I do it from the right side it's easier so from this side you want to be on that way facing that way and you make a straight seam here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to sew like this. I don't understand why it's so dark. Let me flip the camera. Sorry about that. So. You want to sew here. See? Seam allowance towards the side without the interface. And then you're going to straight seam here. Longer stitches. Um, stitch length four. You won't make it all the way up here. So you start wherever it's comfortable for you to start. And end where it's comfortable for you to stop. That's fine. It's just you can't get all the way in there. That's fine. You 
can choose to pin all along if you want. I don't. I just feel with my fingers to make sure it's facing the right way. This is how it would look like. Okay. So when you turn this, you want it, want it to look like this. This is the inside of the lining now. That's the outside. So on the outside, you won't see that seam. It's only on the inside. This will ensure that the inside won't peek up and look like this on the outside because you don't want that. You want it to stay nice and neat on the inside. That's why you make that seam. Now we're going to attach the waistband to the skirt. We're now going to add the waist tape to the skirt. And you start in a corner. And the waist tape with the interface is going to be on there. It can be a little bit tricky here in the corner, but it is possible. What I do is I spread the seam allowance on the waist tape there. And I put that in the corner. I'm going to show you up close soon. So here is the corner, here's the waist tape. So you want, when you spread that, you want that um, seam to match the corner here. Let's see here. And if you wanted to make it easier for you, yourself, you can have attached the lining to the actual skirt a few millimeters in with a straight seam. I'm just not going to bother with that today. But you want to match the uh, side seams on the waist tape with the side seam on the skirt. Make sure you get the lining with you if you have it lined. And then you pin in between. Match the other side seam. And you pin in between there. And last is the last corner.
And now we're going to sew that with a straight seam. You have to fiddle a little bit here, moving it as you wish in order to make it possible for you to start there. So now we will just double check that everything looks all right on this side. It's going to look something like this. If you get a little bit bubble or something, you can just unpick a little bit and then stretch it out and sew it again. But it should all fit like this. Now I think um, we should iron this a little bit before we uh, finish off the last seam on the waist tape. So we're going to iron uh, the waist tape now. Uh, it's up to you if you want to iron it from this side or from the right side, it doesn't matter. What you want is that this seam allowance where you attach the waist tape to the skirt is facing up. I already have iron mine, so I don't want to do too much here. We're going to iron this down as well. So what we want to do is that we want it to look like this. And you iron it flat like that. Poke out the corners if you have cut them off at the on the other side without cutting into the seam. It should be quite nice corners without using, have to use any tools.
And uh, the last thing before buttons and buttonholes is to uh, stitch this down to decide where the lining is. You can do this two ways. You can do that by hand or with a seam. And I, I use a straight seam right under the waist tape here. It's not really visible once it's done, even though you saw it from the right side. So either way, you want to make sure it lays flat like this. If it helps you, you can always pin it a little bit. Doesn't matter. And you want to fold in the seam allowance at the bottom here. So it match with the seam. And here on the corners, I poke it in like this. Like so. You want to try your best to um, fold in your seam allowance as even as possible all the way around. So you can stitch here by hand if you want when you get no visible seams on the front. But what I do is I actually pin from the right side. I will show you because I saw this on the machine. So you still have to fold in the seam allowance. But I want to see my, um, I want the fold to be just slightly under the seam because when I pin it from the right side, I will pin it right here so it catches right there. So instead of lining it up like that, you put it slightly below and then you pin from the right side right under and then it's caught like that and you do that all the way around okay so i pinned all the way along and now i'm gonna sew and i'm gonna sew right underneath the waist tape here straight seam stitch length four And make sure you remove the pins while you sew it as well. Thank you. 
let's have a look so you want to you want you want it to look like this if you saw it on a machine you can if you want to so here and have a visible seam that's totally fine as well i prefer it this way that's totally up to you and on the inside it will look like this so you want to make sure that the lining is with uh, like in the seam oh look at that i have to unpick this and poke it back in and let's see did i have this and just look through your your skirt there if there was anything missing like it was on me how silly Fix that. And if you have to fix it like me, make sure you sew over the old seam a little bit. And on the other side as well. sorted uh, yeah I think the next thing to do now would be to just double check that the skirt fits you make sure that when you wrap it around yourself that it will overlap like this so the right side will match that one but on the inside you you might not see that one on this inside anymore that's fine so if you you can hold it like this if it makes it any easier for you just to make sure that it uh fits you and if and if it for some reason does not fit you it's too small or too big don't worry i will help you to um do any adjustments that you need uh, it may take a little bit of time for me to make the tutorials for that and if you can't find any tutorials just contact me and I will arrange some help for you because I'm totally here for you through everything when you sew these things there already might be actually a video on when I adjust one of my skirts like this is a blue skirt I think but it's in Swedish I will make sure there is an English version anyways all right so what you're gonna do now is all the buttons and buttonholes all right so the last thing to do is to make the button holes and the buttons I'm not gonna show you that in the video because making those button holes are different from one machine to another however if you feel like you struggle you can always contact me anyways and I will do my best to help you now I have it quite neat on my machine I have one of these not everyone has those where I can put the button here and it will literally make the buttonhole suitable for the size of the button and you want to make sure that you place them equally I have about six centimeters in between um, you can just place your buttons and feel uh, what feels best for you but don't take too much in between I think seven is the most I would take for buttons suitable for this type of skirt um, but I'm gonna choose six centimeters in between mine you can mark them with uh, your pins or with um, thread per hand like stitch them out or 
draw them out if you want to. It's up to you how you mark them out. Uh, I go, I start mine from about a centimeter and in. So leave a little bit here uh, on the edge. Measure from there and then in. When you made the bottom holes, I make sure I overlap it like this, following the marking here. And then I normally just draw in in the button hole like this to mark out where I want the buttons to be. And then I stitch them on or hammer it in if it's jeans buttons. So um, I will show you how my skirt looks like when it's done in the end of this video. And I'm not sure there might be other skirts uh, as well being shown in there. I'm not quite sure yet. But um, good luck and if you have any other problems then just ask in my uh, Facebook group, Sabi Design Support group or you can just ask me here on YouTube or anywhere else where you can find me. Thank you very much for watching and I hope um, you will be happy with your skirt. Thank you. Uh, I thought I would real quick show you how I do my um, markings by sewing them. I have first of all marked out where I want my button holes to be uh, by putting a pin and then a measure from there. And wherever I have a pin, I'm gonna stitch right where the pin is, replacing the pin with some stitches. I'm not going to show it. Like so. Because of the pressure foot in um, my sewing machine for button holes, it makes it a bit harder for me to use the pins as um, a marking. It's still possible, it's just making it a bit harder. Just like so and I will make the buttonhole so it's stitched uh, next to the the marking just right next to it so you will go around it like this and I'll see if I can catch that on the video as well I have attached the right uh, presser foot I have chosen the uh, seam for the button holes and I'm gonna now sew this. This is super scary. And I might as well show you how I open it. I'm using a seam ripper. I start, see, I can't see this myself. I have a look. Here. You don't want to remove any stitches or anything. So you put it in there. And you go up a little bit ahead. And I do like this. You don't want to go all the way like this because you may um, do the mistake of actually destroying your button hole. You can continue using the seam ripper like this 
or you can use a little scissor like this and open it up like so and you want the button to be able to push through like so uh, and it's fine if it's a little bit tight uh, because the buttonhole will um, eventually come a bit looser over time and once that is made you can remove the marking like so all right ah i cut that one off then like so and there's one and i just have to finish all the other ones i have here i'm gonna stitch these two and then i'm gonna sew mine and then i'm gonna attach my buttons by hand i've chosen these today because i thought out of all the buttons i had these were the ones i liked the best and they also match the metal on my skirt i thought i would do a quick reveal on how my skirt looks like I have made all of the accessories that was included in the pattern. I absolutely love it. This is my favorite skirt. Join my Facebook group, Subby Design Support Group, and show me your result of your skirt. I would be so happy to see how yours turned out. In the group, you will also find some support and help if you need any through your work. And you will also get updates on coming up patterns previews and release and stuff like that so make sure you join and thank you very much for choosing my sewing pattern and my tutorial bye